Okay, so we got a pretty far tore down. I uh, went ahead and took the head studs out. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can take those out. They'll have a spot at the end for like an Allen uh, socket. So um, those are more for installing the studs as opposed to taking them out. They're generally gonna be too tight. Um, you don't wanna put them in real tight, but the uh, you can, I have a stud remover um, that I use. That's probably, you're probably not gonna have one of these. Um, you don't need one. The easiest way is just to double nut them. So put a nut on there run another one down, snug them up, and then they'll go against each other and back the studs up. Um, so the studs are out. So what I'm gonna do now is take the cam and the lifters out. Um, <clears throat> if you're putting a cam in your car and you're like not wanting to pull the cylinder heads, um, a trick that you can do is uh, number one, you know, take all your rocker arms loose. That way there's no um, pressure on any of the push rods from the valves. And then you can take and spin your cam around. Um, I'm just gonna demonstrate this. So take your cam gear and go ahead and put it on the camshaft. And if you just spin the cam around, it'll take and push all the lifters all the way up in their bore. And what that'll do is then you can sneak that camshaft out uh, without the lifters being in the way or falling down or anything like that. I always take the heads off, but um, just people have asked about it before. So. <clears throat> What I'm going to do now is just take this plate off right here, and these are Torx Plus sockets. Again, kind of like the balancer. Um, you want to be real careful with these. A regular Torx can damage them very easily and will, so do not use a regular Torx bit. I'm probably going to spin this engine around sideways when I take this cam out so you all can see it a little bit better. And since I have the heads off this engine, I'm going to pull the lifters out first. And like I said, the lifters will not fall down um, if I did not do this, but again, there's no point since I have the heads off the car. It's kind of irrelevant. I was I've had people ask about it before, so. Okay, before I take the lifters out, um, this is just basically a valve train organizer. Um, I know earlier I talked about using a box, which you can do, um, but I have these, so I'm not gonna keep you know getting boxes out. But if you need a box, you can do that earlier, or these are pretty handy, not expensive. I'm just gonna lay this out over here. You put valve springs, retainers, all kinds of stuff, keeps them organized. So on the lifters, um, it's gonna be lifters and lifter trays, I'll show you. Um, very similar design on all new engines. So there's some plastic tabs that hold the bolt. <clears throat> Pull these out real easy and keep the lifters in them. And basically all these are, are call them lifter trays. Um, and what they do is these are roller lifters, obviously. Um, and what these do is they kind of retain the lifter basically. And if you look at the lifter, um, you'll see it's got a flat spot on each end and this tray keeps it orientated. So the roller stays true running on the camshaft. So that's all it is. So. We'll replace these with better uh, lifters, but the stock ones are not bad. So as you can see, you ha would have to have the cylinder heads off the engine to remove these. So if you're trying to do like a, a budget cam swap and you don't want to take the heads off and you're not going to replace the lifters, which I wouldn't suggest, but people do it. Um, if you spin the cam around, you'll, keep, you'll push all these up and you can get the camshaft out um, carefully, if one falls down, then you've got to take the engine apart, but <clears throat> they usually stay in there pretty good. Okay, so um, I'll spin the engine around sideways so you can kind of see, but basically um, what you're going to want to do is take the camshaft out very carefully, and probably the easiest thing to do is just use the stock cam bolt. So you've got some kind of leverage, you want to keep the back of the cam from falling down. So I'll spin this around. All right, so I'm gonna pull the camshaft out. So once you get so far, uh, the back end's gonna wanna fall down. So you wanna push leverage down uh, to push the back of the cam up as you're pulling it out. And the furthest you can keep this bolt out. And if you don't have this bolt, they make, some people make uh, like holding fixtures. I've got a piece of all thread. 
that I use. Um, if it's a three bolt cam, put three pieces of all thread in there. Just something to give you some leverage. And the main thing is just go slow. You know, once one of these goes on a cam bearing, then you can kind of relax for a minute. And then once you once it starts coming out, then it's much, much easier because you don't have the weight of the camshaft in the back. Basically what you're trying to avoid is any one of these camshaft lobes to nick or score a cam bearing on the way up. So as long as you take your time, it's not really very hard. There we go. Put this on the table. And basically all we have now are crank rods and pistons. So not a whole lot left. I don't think I'm missing anything um, as far as details or whatever. Um, <clears throat> if I'm not covering anything, just leave it in the comments. I'll try to address it separately or we'll try to answer it in the comments. Like I said, this is just tear down video. Um, we'll have a, a, another subsequent video or a, probably a couple of videos as far as like uh, assembly. So yeah, so it's got ARP rod bolts. ARP 2000 rod bolts. So they used ARP head studs and ARP, um, look like main studs. I believe, yep, ARP main studs and then ARP 2000 rod bolts. So pretty cool. <clears throat> so you can just Take the rod bolts loose, thread them back in just barely. <clears throat> then you just tap them with a, a hammer or anything. You're just gonna separate the rod caps. So Molnar rods, pretty cool. So I just took the soft end of that hammer, just tapped on them on the uh, bottom side of the rod and piston carefully just to um, get them down the cylinder bore. And if you just bring the crankshaft lobe up to the top, then you can access the bolts and separate it real easy. I'm just pushing the piston down far enough to clear the crankshaft journal. At first,
Okay, so we got all the pistons rods out. So now all we got to do is take the main caps off and take the crankshaft out. So the main caps are going to have these side bolts through each one. So we're going to break these loose first. Before we take this crankshaft out, I'm going to remove the crank position sensor because it is very close to the reluctor wheel on the back of the crankshaft and we don't, do not want to damage the sensor. All right, so we got all the side bolts loose. So from here, we take the main cap bolts loose. So this one right here has a kind of an oddball. Deal right there, so that's the only one like it. All these are ARP main studs, so they're gonna be standard sockets and they're all gonna be 12 point. So when I took those loose, I just took them off evenly. Um, <clears throat> so you don't want to take one completely loose and then just general rule of thumb, just, I would uh, kind of, you know, kind of walk them off real evenly. So these studs are coming loose with the nuts, which is perfectly fine. So, I'm going to take them off like that. So there is a short and a long, but it's very easy to tell them apart. So I'm not worried about separating them. And we're going to put new studs in here anyway. We'll put all tool steel stuff in it. So which are much, much stronger than this, even these. What's up, Dookie? What's up, buddy? Hmm. What are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? All right, so I'm taking last main cap out now. We're gonna lift the crank out and we are done. It completes the Helifant engine teardown. Um, so this engine is gonna get a lot of crazy stuff. So we're basically redoing the entire engine. We're not using anything that's in here. So um, we're gonna do a complete build series on this. Um, but it's not gonna be for a little bit because we're gonna have a bunch of crazy stuff made. I don't even wanna tell y'all what it is yet, but definitely if you haven't if you want to see it um to my knowledge it will be the most extreme elephant engine in existence um but so like i said if, if you're interested in it and you haven't subscribed to the channel i definitely would suggest doing that um like i said we're gonna take a little bit of break from this because we're gonna send some stuff off i'll give you a little bit of hint so the crank rods and pistons are all going to be going to austria um, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to tell you what component, what material they're going to be made out of. Um, I will say it's going to be heavily influenced by F1 cars. Um, and then the, uh, the entire valve train is going to go to California and it's going to be all custom built, um, out of another very expensive alloys, out of very expensive alloys rather. and pretty cool stuff. Like I said, I don't want to say too much about it until we get further along, but definitely some super expensive high-end stuff. So now, the only thing we have left is just to pull the cam or crankshaft out. I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and take the crank bolt back out of the front. So you just want to be careful when you lift it out of there. It's pretty heavy, so just be careful with it. You don't want to, uh, that's why I took the studs out, is it'll be easier to nick the 
um, crank journals and you don't want to do that. Um, so what I'll do is I will spin this engine over and I'll turn it sideways so you can see it in the camera. Um, just so you can see what it looks like. The block's super cool looking for sure. It's got either cast iron sleeves or they might be ductile iron, I'm not sure. Alright, so I'm just going to give you all a total rotational view here of the block tore down. So you can see the Mopar stamping cast into the block, um, knock sensors, thrust washers. So these were the lifters went that I pulled out earlier. And you can see the cast iron or ductile iron sleeves. I'm not sure what they are. So the aluminum block doesn't have the uh, normal pla four plastic plugs that go on the top of the Gen 3 Hemi motors like you're used to seeing. So these are where the bolts went in for the side of the main caps that I took out. Couldn't really see that from where I was at. Another knock sensor on the other side that's the same location as the regular Gen 3 Hemis and the other Hellcats. Feel like I'm roasting a pig. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Um, not sure if you all have any other questions or what else I could possibly show. Like I said, there's going to be a lot more detail when it comes into um, engine assembly. Um, this is just kind of like a rough get it tore apart so we can get stuff sent off and have it made. So I'm going to spin this around one more time. You all basically saw the front of the engine the entire time. So can't really get you a good shot of the back. There's nothing really back there to see, honestly. So this way you all can see completely 360, top and bottom, see every view that I was looking at. So, like I said, this pretty much completes the Heliphant engine teardown. Um, <clears throat> Once we get the like, cam specs and stuff, I'll probably do a separate video and kind of give you all some details as far as like the internal components once I've had time to really take a look at them. Um, now I'm just trying to get it apart so we can get stuff sent off so we can get this project moving. Um, so this pretty much wraps it up. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Um, and like I said, or I might do a little segment in a subsequent video where I address those. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hopefully you like this and see you again next time.